The Department of Social Anthropology has a very active research environment. We're also a teaching environment. We are in a world that is facing rapid change. Uh, the human condition is challenged in many ways. We need new uh, ways of thinking on how to cope with this situation, but also we need new ways to do research on this kind of situation. And in, uh, for example, Thomas Elon Eriksson's project, Overheating, which studies uh, processes of accelerated change. Well, the ERC Overheating Project is about globalization, and we're studying it from below, as anthropologists would always tend to do, because we insist on the fact that globalization is always local. I mean, people live in local communities, and globalization does not mean that we're all becoming the same, but that in different locations around the world, we have to respond to and to react to many of the same global tendencies. The three areas of accelerated change that we're looking at are climate and the environment, uh, finance, economy and culture and identity. And in all these three areas we see around the world situations of what we could call overheating effects or accelerated change. Change is simply taking place too fast very often for people to be able to deal with it. But in order to understand the world today in all this complexity and connectivity we need to work more collaboratively and more interdisciplinary. I mean, we need history, we need sociology, we need other sources. And, but the goal that anthropology has to offer to this world is the miracle of ethnography. The situation in Norway, and perhaps particularly at this department and in Oslo, is quite unusual in that we have a very strong public road, we have a strong public voice, we're visible. People out there in the media, they know what anthropologists are. We go out and give talks to Rotary clubs and to associations, and we have a much closer relationship to uh, the society out there than uh, they would at uh, nearly any other anthropology department I can think of. There are several challenges related to doing anthropology in your own society because obviously many other things you encounter will be quite familiar to you. And how then do you get curious enough? How, do you, how, does your, how is your ethnographic imagination triggered if it's not by some kind of surprise? A strong anthropology at home can then contribute to making anthropology as a whole more robust as a discipline and better prepared for the challenges of the 21st century. In anthropology, we, uh, we can think about it as, a, as how, how has the Nordic uh, region been uh, coined in, in, in terms of a gatekeeping concept that, that people are familiar with. And I would say that uh, equality, or equality as sameness, is one such, such concept that has inspired many anthropologists. I just came back from a year at UC Santa Cruz, which was really inspirational. And uh, it makes you more aware of what makes Norway special. And one of the things that we take for granted here is that we have access to the media and we are influential in political decisions. We are called by the media every week, uh, sometimes every day. Uh, there are anthropologists in the newspaper and on TV very, very often. And there is a huge interest. People know what anthropology is about. And we are mostly prepared to engage in debates that are where we can somehow feel our, our competence is relevant. I've always been very you know, actively involved in the intellectual environment and the activities of the department. And it, it is an, a department that invites students to, to be a part of, uh, of the work being done at the department. I've, I've been working with a group called uh, Ifugao of uh, Northern Luzon, the Philippines, where I have investigated their animistic and Pentecostal ritual practices primarily. So I've been working in this small village high up in the mountains of uh, Northern Luzon. The way students are allowed to do fieldwork at the department already at the master level has enabled me to, to go quite deeply into those processes in that village. So it's a very active research environment and a very active learning environment and it integrates students within that environment in, in, a, very, in a very good way. When people ask me what you can do with anthropology, uh, I tend to say absolutely anything. It's all about combining your passions with the deep understanding of what anthropology is and applying those two pieces uh, together. I didn't expect to work outside of academia when I started my career in anthropology and suddenly I find myself working at Boeing, uh, helping them design aircraft from a people 
perspective, the passengers, the pilots, the flight attendants working at Microsoft, helping them understand how to build software that was meaningful and relevant, useful and desirable to the people they serve. Companies and organizations and governments need help in understanding that from a people perspective, from a societal perspective, and that's what we bring to the table. We believe that by going out and looking at uh, conditions for human life today, we have the possibility of seeing the world anew. And I think everybody at this particular time in uh, humanity's history, we really need a fresh perspective. And that is what these wonderful colleagues that I have at our department can offer, and also our students.